The objective of this video series is to provide a guide to basic bunkering. We look at the commercial side, how bunkers are bought and sold, the technical side of bunker fuel, what's in it and how it affects our engines, and in this video, the operational side, how to deliver and receive bunkers safely and efficiently. The most common form of bunker delivery is by small coastal tankers, often called barges. Road tankers are also used in some instances as our pipelines. But whichever form of delivery system is used, there are many things to consider. To start with, is there a draft restriction in the port? Can bunkering take place during cargo operations? Can bunkering be carried out at night? Or only during hours of daylight? Important questions that need answering before even ordering the bunkers. The last thing you want is a bill from the supplier for a delay, or worse, a cancellation, because one small detail has been overlooked. There are also internal considerations. Has enough time been allocated for bunkering? If, say, a ship is bunkering 500 tonnes of fuel oil, it could take around five hours to complete the task. Does the ship have the necessary resources? Will the bunkering operation require crew to work on overtime? Everybody involved in the bunkering operation should be absolutely clear, not just about the type and amount of fuel to be bunkered, but also exactly when bunkering will take place, where it will take place, and who needs to be involved. OK, assuming we've got all that sorted out, let's deliver some fuel. As I said, most bunkers are delivered by fuel barges. They may be relatively small vessels, but manoeuvring, often in very congested ports, demands a high level of seamanship. This type of vessel may have a pumping rate of around a thousand tons per hour and could well service several ships during the course of a day. Now, because these ships are busy, well, we just went right out and bought one of our own so that we could show you a few practical examples of the bunkering operation. And here it is. Nicely painted, everything working, and all 16 tanks laden with fuel oil and diesel. As far as finding a receiving ship to help us out, well, they're also pretty busy, so we bought one of those too. Once she's in port, she'll be looking to bunker and be on her way as soon as possible. Approaching the receiving vessel must be done with caution. There should be clear communication between the barge and the ship as to the precise mooring location. Arabia, captain to mate. The ship must know when the barge is approaching and ensure that any anchors not in use are stowed and, if the ship is just docked, that bow thrusters are switched off. Once the barge is secured, properly fended to prevent damage caused by sudden movement, the next stage of the bunkering process can begin. Before the hose is connected, the barge crew must prepare to deliver the bunkers, and the receiving ship's crew must prepare to receive them. When the hose has been hauled up, the receiving ship normally has the responsibility for connecting it to the appropriate manifold. Again, communication here is vital. There have been many cases where fuel has been pumped into the wrong tank, often with disastrous results. Every ship should have clear procedures for preventing spillages. Making sure that scupper plugs are firmly inserted. That all topside doors and hatches are closed. And making sure that drip or catch trays are correctly positioned under connections. 
But life being what it is, accidents do sometimes happen. The ship should therefore also have a clear emergency plan to deal with a spillage should one occur. There should also be clear emergency procedures to control the other principal hazard when bunkering. Fire. On the barge, the same preventive and emergency preparations should be made. Ensuring health and safety and protecting the environment are the most important considerations when bunkering. Important too is agreement concerning the exact amount of fuel to be delivered. As part of the initial request and agreement to supply the bunkers, there should be a clear statement of the fuel grade to be pumped and the quantity. The problem is, what you see may not always be what you actually get. In the video covering technical aspects of bunkering, we talk about density at a given temperature as being the only true indicator of weight. The on-board test provides the actual density of the fuel compared with that stated. Discrepancies must be noted, as these may well affect the final invoice. A representative from the receiving vessel should then visit the barge, using a proper ladder by the way, to check the ullages, the amount of fuel the barge is carrying. Checking the tanks after delivery and then comparing the figures will confirm the amount pumped to the ship and become useful evidence should a dispute arise. Tank measuring may be carried out using gauges or a dip tape. Whichever method is used to measure tanks, there is one important thing to watch out for. The vessel's trim. With the barge in a level position, the tank measurement will be accurate. But when the trim alters, so does the measurement. In this case, indicating far more fuel than the tank actually contains. And of course, the same principle applies to the tanks on the receiving vessel. Both fuel barge and receiving vessel should carry trim correction tables so that the appropriate adjustments can be made. Responsible ships operators will source bunkers of good quality from reputable suppliers, but in some parts of the world, fuel quality is, at best, questionable. The receiving vessel must therefore ensure that the new bunker fuel will be compatible with the existing fuel. This can be verified by taking a sample and carrying out another simple on-board test. One more thing to look at and then we can get the hose connected. I've already mentioned the importance of communication, but communication doesn't just happen. It has to be made to happen. Who is the person with overall responsibility for the bunkering operation? And how will he communicate? How will members of the crew communicate? In what language? And are they clear about what they should be communicating? For example, if hand signals are to be used, does everybody understand what these signals mean? The point is, Nothing must be left to chance. If fuel is being pumped typically at around 300 tonnes an hour, that's five tonnes every minute. So even a few seconds worth of confusion following something going wrong could mean a lot of oil ending up over the side and in the water. Right, our ships are now ready to exchange fuel. Deploying the hose, having checked it first for signs of damage, is a job for trained personnel only. It must never be allowed to stretch. During the pumping process, the hose should be adequately supported to avoid strain at the joints. A new seal should be used for every bunkering operation, and the hose end tightened properly, making sure that all flange holes contain a bolt. There should be a final check to make sure that all valves to the receiving tanks are fully open and that gauge readings have been recorded. All valves not in use should be confirmed closed.
Preparing to take fuel samples is a key part of the process. Ideally, the samples should be taken by continuous drip throughout the entire pumping cycle. Pumping should begin slowly so that joints may be checked for leaks before moving to full pressure. And now comes the relatively boring bit, waiting for a couple of hours, sometimes longer, for the tanks to fill. But there are still things to do. Monitoring the flow, standing by to switch tanks, bearing in mind that no tank should be overfilled. And even though things look like they're going according to plan, checking the receiving tanks at regular intervals to make sure that the fuel is actually going where it should be going. And checking the physical connections for any signs of leaks. One of the golden rules is never leave the fuel manifolds unattended at any time. As pumping nears completion, the flow rate should be slowed down. On no account should the hose be disconnected till all the pressure has been taken off. Even then, the hose should be drawn down to avoid spillages from any retained oil. The samples should be clearly marked and carefully sealed. They should be distributed and retained as per contract, but typically one of the samples should be retained by the supplier. Ideally, the taking and sealing of samples should be witnessed. Why? Well, in any dispute, the sample will almost certainly be the most important piece of evidence. Afternoon again, Chief. Uh, completed okay. bunker in now. Paperwork will be another crucial piece of evidence in the event of a dispute, so it's important to get that right, too. The Ullage report should clearly state if the fuel measurements were witnessed, along with the temperature of the products. This document should be countersigned by an officer from the receiving vessel. The bunker receipt is the most important document. It should be read carefully and signed only if the facts are accepted. But supposing the facts aren't accepted? This is an interesting area since, for example, a disagreement between fuel barge and receiving vessel concerning the amount of fuel delivered is not grounds to refuse to sign the bunker receipt. If there are any uncertainties, a letter of protest should be issued. It holds no party to any liability. It only registers the possibility that something is not right and suggests that further investigation is required. In a minute, we'll be summarising the things we've shown you so far. So first, let's take a quick look at the other methods of delivering bunkers. In some ports, the road tanker is still the only way to deliver bunkers. Ensuring adequate access is crucial. If the receiving vessel is on a gas jetty, for example, getting the tanker onto the jetty may not be allowed. In that event, extra hose must be ordered at extra cost, of course. And bear in mind that the longest sensible hose run will be around 200 metres. Road tankers are normally fitted with pumps capable of discharging the bunker in around 30 minutes, and most will produce a delivery docket automatically. Although the rising cost of maintaining pipeline bunkering facilities has prompted a shift to fuel barges, bunkering by pipeline still exists in many parts of the world. 
In fact, there are distinct advantages in taking bunkers this way, since it's a method creating potentially the least number of quality and quantity problems. Things to watch out for? You need to make sure in advance that the right hose connections have been ordered, to make sure that flow meter readings are accurate. You also need to know the content of the pipeline itself before and after the discharge. The operational side of bunkering, when carried out properly, is straightforward and safe. The fact that it's going on hundreds of times a day all over the world without incident is testimony to that. But accidents do happen, often with disastrous results, which means that every bunkering operation must be considered with the greatest of care. And that starts with planning, knowing the restrictions, Port Authority regulations, for example. Being absolutely clear about the type and amount of fuel to be bunkered. Clear about when bunkering will take place and who will be involved. making sure that procedures to prevent spillages are followed and that emergency measures are in place. Checking for quality by carrying out simple on-board tests. Checking for quantity by making sure that tanks are inspected before and after bunkering. Always remembering the things that can affect fuel measurement. Quality procedures, scuppers have been checked, anti-pollution materials are ready. Before pumping begins, making sure that communication methods are clear to all. That nothing has been determined like the possibility of fuel going into the wrong tank. Even after carrying out checks, monitoring the pumping process, making sure the main hose connections are never... showing the same care of attention taking cells and when completing paperwork. And that's about it. And the next time you get involved in taking bunkers, take care.